before we get started. I have to publicize this online in the proper kind of way, so I just got to make sure that it's propagating. Oh, there I am. This online in the proper kind of way, so I just got to make sure that it's propagating. Oh, there Boom, there's that. Boom, there's that. Yo. So today, uh, I'm going to do my usual morning routine. A minor today. Let me get my set list out here. Boink. Boink. So there's music for you. Let me turn down the brightness, as always. Makes it a little bit more readable for you. There. Nice. Uh, almost. There. There. <laughs> there. Okay. So today I thought I would get a little closer to the camera so you can see a little bit more of how my technique is working. I thought that uh, a little further away it was difficult to see exactly what was happening. So I'm going to experiment with sitting a little closer today and see what happens, all right? So since we're doing A minor, we got to, we got to think about three forms of A minor. Natural minor, harmonic minor, and melodic minor. And the way that I get through the first one is to just do my usual gig of playing modes up and down the instrument. That is to say, A natural minor has no key signature. There are no sharps, no flats. So I start on my lowest scale degree and I play two octaves up and two octaves down in A natural minor. Sounds like this. <laughs> I'm going to put my metronome on. I'm at 80 with the eighth note subdivision on. I'm going to start on low E. I'm going to play it just like that. And I'm going to go F, G, A all the way up until I hit the high F. Looking for more than anything, a good airstream, very relaxed body and a good tone all the way up and down the instrument, okay? Here we go. One, two. Well, that's pretty buzzy. That's pretty buzzy. Let's do a Move my reed up on my mouthpiece a little bit and go on. Now I'm on F, obviously. Two, three. trying to see if I can if I can put my fingers exactly where I want them to in every second millisecond of every beat <clears throat> I want it to be purely even going on that all happens with using good air one two <laughs>
that's my early handshake in A minor. All I'm doing there is just trying to just blow through my, my instrument. I think, <laughs> I almost said blow through my hands, but that's really what I'm, I'm trying to think as though I'm, in, I'm, I'm not blowing, I'm not fingering, I'm not doing that. It's all one idea, that it's a gestalt of good clarinet playing in this, and it's all activated by the air, okay? And two things about the air. One, <clears throat> when I take a breath, I don't raise my body. There's no... All of that is tension. You, I, I doubt that you can see my shoulders move up at all much. So I'll do a whole cycle and then take a breath and go on and watch. Watch, watch. It all, all happens here. It doesn't happen here. If my shoulders do raise, it's only because they're connected to my body. I, I blow, I try to... Look how, how fat my belly gets. Okay, who cares? What are we trying to like win a beauty contest? You know, classical music is show business for ugly people, baby. Let's do this. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do the harmonic minor, which is basically this, except I'm not going to use the F sharp here. Well, pardon me. I'm going to make this an F natural and uh, have it the same on the way down. So, natural minor sounds. Harmonic minor. The blessing of that is it's the same up and down, but if you see the melodic minor up there, it's different. And you really got to be facile with all of these. So today my, my goal for both of these scales is 150 clicks on the metronome. Starting out at 100. Subdivision on, <clears throat> harmonic minor, trying to extrapolate that idea. The air activates everything. It's a gestalt. It's a total technique. It's not, here's my air, here's my fingers, here's this and that. It's all the same idea. One. of the scale in one breath if you can. One, two. somewhat challenging to keep even because of the weird uh, uh, augmented second and then a ma minor second to deal with. Those are the, pr the traps of, uh, of playing this scale evenly, but as long as you keep, I'm really trying to keep um, as much discipline, not allowing my fingers to move when they want, allowing the fingers to move when I want. Same idea, up 20 clicks, 120 without the subdivision. Don't, str don't strain for the high notes. High notes will be perfect if you just let it happen. One. Now I'm going to 
to try to stress my air pr production a little bit. I'm going to try to do the same thing and put five reps of the scale in one breath, which is challenging. clicks always well not always mostly same idea I'm not trying to do anything different try to take the exact same exact same ideas and just place them in another in a, a slightly elevated tempo I'm not changing anything I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to change anything challenging to play it as evenly as you can but that's why I took a few extra reps because I felt like the first couple were like oh but by the time I started to get into my fourth uh, and then definitely into my second breath things were starting to really settle so I allowed that time to happen I didn't I didn't restrict myself to the plan that I'd set um, I allowed I allowed myself a little bit of leeway to to stretch myself within within the structure that I gave myself. Again, doing an extra rep is no problem. Leaving, leaving a rep on the floor is a problem. Here's 150, this is our goal for today. Plenty fast, especially the, with the scale. But I'm just trying to, again, extrapolate the idea, do it the same exact way, use my air, and think about the evenness. coming down is having to deal with this a a to g sharp every everything else is such an obvious finger motion and quite a large finger motion but then if to go from a to g sharp is purely bit, bit, th th this is what's giving me a little trouble this this little this little thing once i want to skip over it but i can't all right so now we're actually going to do this printed form of the scale here this melodic minor raise the sixth and seventh on the way up lower it on the way down i actually find 
this scale easier to play than harmonic minor because there's no wacky augmented second in there. Once you get used to raising and lowering, it's no real deal. It's no real problem, I don't think. Um, again, recognize that I'm not doing any of this while looking at the music, okay? So, as you get better and better at doing these scales, you want to do them all away from printed music so that all of this resides just within you. Melodic, <coughs> melodic minor, subdivision on, 100 beats to the minute. Just keep it easy, keep it even, keep it a full sound. G natural, and then F on the left, E on the right, F sharp on the left, G sharp on the right, and then back to So you, you have to really alternate your left and right. So. so I build a little exercise for myself when I feel, I, uh, that felt okay, but this I do this when I feel like that's a little squirrely. I just go back and forth, and then uh, I do a circle, and, I, and then I let it cycle forward. You'll see, it's pretty easy, like this. Okay, and once you can kind of like feel like you're you're in control at, at, at that kind of tempo, you can pretty much hang with it. So let's do it again. I started out rushing a little bit. I was still camped out at 150. So let's see if I can keep it totally under control. Twenty, same idea, subdivision off, easy, even, still just doing the same thing. Take off my uh, wireless so that you're not getting all of the, my weather messages. Not bad. I feel pretty good about that. Let's do it again. I like about that for the most part was that it was even that's the first part that it was kind of, the technique was really kind of pearly and clean each note kind of popped out while staying within the sort of uh, the context of a, of a line all that's good I think it's good for me I like it 140 same idea keeping it easy not trying to worry about the speed I'm just worried about the sound and the evenness the speed will come one, two, mm.
And then finally, here's our goal, 150. Same idea, keep it easy. Starting to move the tempo quite a bit now, but it's all right. Arpeggio here. This little guy. Leaving off that first note. Obviously because I don't care. So starting here. First with slurs and then I'll do a little articulation. But always back to 100 with the subdivision on. Good air. Really easy. All the way up and down. <laughs> Here's the rare exception of going t uh, 20 clicks at a time. I'm going to go to 110. I'm going to test my slur two, tongue two articulation. I'm going to slur two, tongue two, slur one, uh, tongue one, slur two, tongue one, and tongue two, slur two, three times in a row. Sounds like this. <laughs> articulation back to slurs <clears throat> today. So here it is. Feeling okay. of it and also the cleanliness of it. I really love a very, very clean technique. Um, that's when I think somebody's playing an instrument really well is when I can hear every single note, even in runs that they're trying to play for me. I could tell that they've taken care of every little bit of their preparation 
And that is beautiful to me. It's like, you know, it's great art where somebody has taken care of every little bit, like a great painting or a great book, a great film where you know that nothing is there by accident. That's, what, that's how you want to approach your performance. Nothing is there by accident. All right. So now we're going to move on to this. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is called an interrupted scale. It starts on each degree, blah, 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 and then finally goes down here. I'm going to do two iterations per breath and two breaths. Okay, so back to 100. Back to an eighth note subdivision on, please. Yep, and then super easy. Go to 120 do the same idea keep it easy you know we're, we're just moving the idea a little faster but we're keeping the idea exactly the same the speed is going to get there as long as how we approach the speed i'm not saying it's going to get there overnight for everybody look i've been doing this for a long time um, but if you continue to work on things in this kind of directed fashion you will get better 120 My fingers are kind of popping right now, which is pretty nice. There's a there's a place you get when you're blowing through the clarinet really well that it just kind of feels like the inside of the instrument is vibrating really fast, which it is, but you don't really feel it. But it really feels like my fingers are being activated by all of that air. I'm not trying to make this happen with my hands. That's impossible. I'm trying to make this happen with my air, and then my fingers ride on it. It's it's a gestalt kind of idea. Same thing, 130. There's nothing panicked about my approach. There's nothing struggling about my approach. I'm trying to lay back, allow my body to work, allow my mind to work with my body, and then let it happen. Okay? I'm not forcing the issue. Here come some thirds. No articulation, slurs only. Take the repeat, take a breath, take the repeat. That's how I do this. Starting at 100.
All right, crank it to 120, take the subdivision off and do the same shit. Make it easy, make it musical, make it natural. Don't make it fast. Fun. <laughs> because I thought I could do better and I could. There's no reason to just restrict yourself to the structure that you set up. I have to set up myself a structure and that's why I do this exactly this way. But if I need an extra rep or two, I take it every single time, okay? There's no reason to lock yourself into um, having to do, there's no reason to lock yourself into something rigid and, and there's certainly no reason to ever let a rep that you feel like was not great go unanswered. Pick the trash up, you know, don't leave it on the floor, even if it means doing it slowly and then leaving it alone for the rest of the day. It's better than just leaving the rep out there. Here's 130, here's our goal. Somewhat challenging, but I'm still trying to keep it really easy here. One. decided that I had done it. It was good. And I was like, okay, well that's done. I only have the natural minor to go down on. Okay. So in that instance, I, I allowed my concentration to wane and there's the mistake. There's the lesson. Okay. I'm going to move on here to, let's see. No. Oh, I forgot. I put a half page on. Hold on. Okay, good. Let's see. All right. So these are exercises by Fritz Krebs. They're very old school. If you've watched me practice, you know um, I consider these to be my not-so-secret weapon. Um, these take all the things that we just worked on <clears throat> and put them in a more musical context. Um, and I guess you could consider these tactical exercises on one, uh, on one axis, but really for me, I think they're, they're like fast, long tones really allow me to dig into what it feels like to be a good clarinet player and to blow through my horn in the right kind of way. So, let's do this. So eventually, tomorrow will be my full speed um, approach, which will be uh, 160 beats on the metronome for the scales and 140. So everything that we just did, 10 clicks higher, another notch up. And tomorrow my, my goal for this will be to set my metronome at 60 and to play everything. Um, today I'm doing at 55. I'm slightly under. <clears throat> but as you can see, these exercises go from, from 16th notes to uh, 
sextuplets into 30 seconds and really get kind of gnarly. But we start out kind of sedate. A mole, A minor in German. All right, so during these initial kind of slow 16th ones, I'm really trying to be perfectly legato. Like, I'm listening almost completely to the quality of my sound throughout. Am, am I making a beautiful ringing tone? And to the seamlessness of, of the notes being uh, completely connected. So there's 55. I'm going to leave it on and I'm just going to play the exercises as printed. Four repeats per line followed by the, uh, the very ending measure each time. Yeah, I can read these from the screen here. Uh, there's, this is where my television is. And I can see what's going on. <clears throat> so I'll read these. I'll read these from here so you can still get a better look at um, how my technique is actually working. But you can hear like how purely legato I'm trying to be. Just so smooth and so beautiful. Like each one of these is an orchestral excerpt that I'm trying to win a job with. <laughs> see just sort of how, how matter-of-fact my technique is with this. I'm really, there's, I, I'm trying to cut out all excess motion. I'm just really just trying to be, believe me, I sway a lot. I kind of like, I'm a very kinetic kind of learner. I learn things with my body. But I do know that like being, uh, adding muscle to a relaxed idea is not a winning proposition. Um, and I, I'm a bulky guy. I have a lot of bulk that I need to deal with. So uh, I really try to stay out of my own way as much as possible. Okay, let's move on. Number 15. Same idea. Just making it so beautiful. If you'll notice something that I, I, I talk about this a lot, I half hole everything. So if I play that second line slowly, so I never I'm never lifting my finger like this. I'm constantly going back and forth via the half hole. That's a good technique. Okay, and it really allows stuff like that first. such a nice connection and I get it by just like venting that key here with the half hole 
okay? It's like when you when you open up your register key, you don't want to pop it. You want to generally just give it a little gentle squeeze. That much, that much right there is enough to change the, the, the register. That bare amount that I've just opened up. So you don't need to slam things down. And the same thing here with my half hole. By, instead of popping that, that, that vent open, that, that, that can allow a lot of pops to happen. Instead, that vents it on a microscopically slower scale. And that gives you a much smoother, a much smoother uh, way to get over the top rate. Let me do that one again, number 15. That's just like a rule of my technique. I use the half hole in almost every circumstance if possible. Okay? I have several rules. I use the half hole as much as possible. I use my right pinky as much as possible. I'm trying to keep my brain having to think about as few things as possible because I'm not that bright. Here we go. Number 16. <laughs> So including for this low E here, I'm just using my right pinky. I'm not using my left hand at all, right? Once again, I'm not struggling to get over those high notes. I'm just letting them come out as part of my technique. I change, I'm doing stuff on the interior of my mouth, which we can talk about at a certain point. But other than that, I'm not squeezing those high notes. I'm not pushing those high notes. I'm just allowing that beautiful air and my voicing to let it let it all happen almost completely internally. I don't want to give it any body English. I don't, uh, I don't need to help. It doesn't need help. Any help that I offer makes things worse. It's like my wife. Oh! Yeah, and that exercise is obviously almost pathetically simple, but that actually kind of makes it hard because then there's no excuse. Then everything has to be perfect, or why isn't it? And that that's another area of difficulty. Number 19.
feeling a little sharp. All right. Now we move into some sextuplets, same tempo, different subdivision. over the break stuff same thing here over the break stuff now in 30 seconds don't go too fast try to use every every bit of the beat as possible one and two and mm. absolutely holding down my right hand throughout so watch my right hand only as I play this as this 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 these first couple of lines here I've kept this anchor down I've never even removed this finger at all so um, anything above uh, above open G G sharp a and B flat you can obviously you know this Leave your right hand down, but in context, it really, really works. Yeah, and the only time this finger comes up is when this A shows up here. Okay, so one more time and let me finish it off. Mm. All right, I'm feeling pretty good today on the whole, I got to tell you. For me, it's pretty good. For other people, it may suck. I don't know. I don't know because I don't listen to anybody else. <clears throat> <laughs> I never have. All right, 22, <laughs> This, this little bit here is, is tricky, isn't it? This going into, into that, okay? So a couple of things to think about. One, hanging on to that half hole, and two, um, allowing both a half hole and your voicing to take you up to that high F. If you just do it with your technique, you gotta really, be very directed with your airstream and have your voicing be a very clear E sound as you get up to that top. See how it pops out if I use that half hole, man? It just, if I go. Oh. works for me. Let's finish this off. 
for some reason. I'm really having to pull myself back. Come on, buddy! I really don't want to rush. That's like part of my, my, my idea. It's like rushing is in inherently not musical. Every Scrunching those beats together is not great and they just tend to get more and more scrunched and that's less and less musical. But if you can lay back into the beat and try to be on the very back end of the, of the beat and fill up every beat with every millisecond with notes. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to hold myself in rain here, number slow that feels. I'm perfectly happy almost dragging the metronome. In fact, that's what I'm actually trying to do. Okay, filling up each beat. Next, same thing. Two bars, two breaths. <laughs> Just trying to like make my technique as pretty as possible just even pearly each note kind of um, one of my old teachers who's an oboist uh, was my uh, chamber music coach when I was an undergrad his name was Mark Lifshe and he played first oboe for the Cleveland Orchestra for many 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 years and he was a great great oboist and oboes like uh, uh, have less technique usually to deal with than clarinets, but they have a lot of melodic ideas that they have to play. And Lifshi used to use this term, he said, notes in a, in, a, in a phrase are like pearls on a string. And the, the string is the most important part because without them, the pearls just kind of fall all over the place. But if, they're, if they follow the line of the string, that's what notes should be, just pearls on the string. And the string is the most important part, and that is your air. Let me swab out just for a second because I've got a little bit of condensation. In my a-hole! I've got cut, I've got water in my a-hole. That's true. This is my a-hole. I have water in there. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada shwing. All right. Numero 24. These get challenging at this tempo. These last three at 55 and 60 were a little bit of a pain in the butt, but excellent for me. Like spinach or something. Oh, I like spinach. Thank <laughs> you. 
that. I'll live with that. That is fucking hard. These that this here at that tempo starts to be a little whoops, hello, sorry about that. A little squirrely. Alright, let's finish these off. 25, baby. Here we go. <laughs> is challenging it takes a lot of sort of mental sorting out one of the most important things I mentioned yesterday is getting your thumb off that register key in a very timely fashion so that those bottom notes really have an opportunity to speak let's finish off with number 26 space here you only need to do one flip so E to the middle B to the flip B to the fork you don't want to go flipping back and forth unless you absolutely positively must what are we oboe players oh, what did I just talk about friends is pretty much my a minor routine tomorrow I'll go a little bit faster uh, I'm gonna work off cam a little bit today but Friday at 10 a.m. Joan Towers wings in an exhaustive an exhausting uh, masterclass by myself here in my room it'll be fun trust me see you later thank you for coming by I really do